Some of us only go to the doctor when we are sick or have health concerns, but your internal medicine physician can actually offer much more. One way to achieve good health is to get an annual physical. Your physician can actually offer some valuable help during your visit that can assist you in preventing future health roadblocks down the road. Joining us today is Dr. Nathan Sutton to discuss the benefits of getting an annual physical. So I'm Dr. Nathan Sutton. I work at Family Doctor Clinic and at TGMC. People should always get an annual physical, um, mainly to get blood work, immunizations. We check um, blood pressure heart rate and basically just get as much information as we can so that you can sit down with your physician uh, and make educated decisions on, on what to do with that information. Some standard health checks that we do at annual physicals include height and weight, blood pressure, lab tests including blood count and cholesterol, screenings for age appropriate cancer risk factors and an EKG to check heart health. For women and men in their 20s and 30s the main things that we would screen for is blood pressure, cholesterol, diabetes screening, immunization, and this is a physical exam. The only difference for women would be starting at age 21, we do recommend a pap smear. For women and men in the age group uh, 40 to 64, there are a couple of additional screening tests that we like to do. Um, for some women with certain risk factors, osteoporosis screening uh, is recommended. Also, mammograms, pap smears like we discussed previously. Uh, in addition to the other things that we discussed, including diabetes screening, cholesterol. Um, as far as men, we also recommend prostate cancer screening. Depending on smoking history in this age frame, we also recommend uh, a low-dose CT scan uh, of the lungs to, to screen for lung cancer. Annual exams are a great way to be proactive in your health. Preventative care focuses on preventing a disease rather than treating it once it progresses. To prepare for your annual physical exam, you should arrive on time, bring a list of your current medications, and depending on the time of your appointment, be fasting for blood work. I'm currently accepting new patients at Family Doctor Clinic. You can call 985-868-7882 or visit tgmc.com to learn more. Ever feel like you are killing yourself in the gym but aren't seeing the results you want? Your diet and how much you stretch can help make or break your fitness goals. A healthy diet in conjunction to regular fitness can help build muscle, give you energy, and reduce fatigue. Regular stretching can prepare muscles, improve athletic performance, and reduce soreness so you can get back to the gym sooner. Joining us today is TGMC dietitian Michelle Bricino and TGMC health and sports performance specialist Patrick Labatt. Stretching is a useful tool um, to athletes or any population that's uh, exercising. Um, the key is to uh, determine what type of stretching is best for you. All of them have been shown to work, um, but dynamic stretching, um, ballistic stretching, static stretching, all of these have been shown to work. Mostly with my athletes, I use more dynamic or ballistic stretching. The only time that I really try to focus on using a static stretch is if the person, the client, or the athlete uh, actually shows a lack of range of motion into an area that they really should have range of motion, uh, whether that be due to damage or damaged tissues or anything like that injury, previous injury, um, or just not having that range of motion, never been able to get there. Um, so I think there's a place for all of them, it's just trying to determine which one works best for you. You can't outrun a bad diet. Eating fuels your body with the nutrients it needs to burn and refuel before and after a workout. It also complements the fitness routine by helping to lose weight and or build muscle. Some pre-workout stretches that you can do before your uh, routine or your workout. Um, it's just pretty much anything that's going to target the area that you're looking to uh, activate. Like I said earlier, unless you have a lacking range of motion, um, you really don't need a static stretch in any type of area. But you know, ballistic stretching or uh, dynamic stretching prior to, uh, prior to and after a workout is both beneficial. You should have a snack before you work out if it's a workout lasting an hour or more, especially those with blood sugar issues. Carbs and protein are great nutrients to fuel your workout. Carbs are what provide us energy, so we need to eat them in order to put energy into our muscles so that we can use them um, during exercise so that we can perform at our maximum capacity. Some examples are oatmeal, granola bars, some Greek yogurt, if you can tolerate dairy, um, or even a piece of whole grain toast. Uh, when it comes to post-workout stretching, um, if you're feeling extremely tight in an area, then you can maybe do some light stretching. But mostly what you want to do after a tough workout is um, active recovery, um, whether it be the, that afternoon or later uh, the next day. 
Um, just making sure that whatever muscle group or uh, parts of the body that you use during that workout that might be sore or overworked, just making sure that they get moving again with some very light activity through full ranges of motion. Uh, it doesn't necessarily have to be stretching. Uh, if you do feel like your range of motion is hampered afterwards, which is normal, a little light stretching can be beneficial, but mostly just become, you know, active recovery, make sure we get those muscle groups reworking again the next day to increase the blood flow and uh, activate recovery. Eating after a workout is meant to help replenish some of the calories that you've used, and most importantly to help with muscle recovery and to replenish glycogen. If you don't eat, you end up feeling very fatigued and you battle low blood sugar. Um, it also can limit your body's repair process, so it'll make it harder for you to reach those fitness goals. It's important for you to also drink water before, during, and after a workout to prevent dehydration. It's recommended to eat within 30 minutes after your workout. If you're unable to eat a full meal right after, have a snack, and then make sure you're having a full meal within three hours. Just remember, please rehydrate. Complex carbs such as brown rice, quinoa, healthy lean proteins like chicken and fish are great options for a post-workout meal. I'm Julia, a dietitian at Terrebonne General Medical Center. Today's edition of The Fresh Fork is all about avocados and what makes the avocado a superfood. When shopping for avocados, choose an avocado that yields gently to pressure and that has a knob at the stem that easily falls off. Store fully ripe avocados in the refrigerator and those that are not yet quite ready to eat at room temperature. Did you know that avocados are the only fruit with a significant source of fat? Avocados contain monounsaturated fatty acids, which help reduce LDL, or bad, cholesterol levels. It's this healthy fat that helps enhance the absorption of nutrients in other food that avocados are eaten with. Avocados alone contain over 20 different vitamins and minerals three grams of fiber, and six grams of good fat. If you're not yet convinced on the power of avocados, research shows that those who consume avocados regularly tend to have a lower BMI and smaller waist circumference than those who don't consume avocados regularly. Today, Chef Brian is preparing sweet potato toast topped with avocado and boiled egg. First, take an avocado. Slice in half. And gently dice the inside using a grid style. Take a spoon and gently scoop it out and place into the bowl. Next, we're using a tablespoon of lime juice and the lime zest mashing together until we form a bit of a paste. Next, take a sliced sweet potato that's been baked in the oven with a drizzle of olive oil and top with the avocado mash. Top with a bit of feta cheese, a pinch of cilantro, then the boiled egg, and a dash of cayenne pepper for some heat. And there we have it. A delicious meal or a snack for any time of the day. The avocado sweet potato toast with egg on top. Healthy eating starts with a healthy grocery run. Michelle Bricino, TGMC dietitian, invites us to grocery shop with her at Canada's Family Market. Michelle's tried and true tricks will help shoppers make smart decisions while at the store. My name is Michelle Bricino. I am a registered dietitian with TGMC's Weight Management. Shoppers should always keep in mind to never come to the store hungry. You're more likely to buy things you really do not want or not on your shopping list. Um, you should always pick up a sales paper when you walk through the door or check them out online. Um, that way you can see what's in season and what's on sale and purchase um, healthier and cheaper items um, that are in stock. So the first section you want to start off your grocery store tour with is going to be uh, in the produce aisle. So this is going to be the majority of what should be in your buggy. About 50% of your plate should be fruits and vegetables at all times. So this is going to be the area you want to spend the most time in. Fresh is always best. 
but we can choose frozen options and canned options and we'll talk about that as well. Um, but this is going to be the section that you want to make your main focus on. You always want to choose a variety of colors um, and different types of vegetables to keep things um, healthy and different and it's important to have these different varieties and colors because you have different nutrients in each of these items and so they protect you against a variety of different illnesses. The next stop is the meat department and so this is going to be a fourth of your plate and so we always want to choose leaner cuts of meat um, and you want to choose more poultry, chicken, turkey, and seafood more often than your red meat. But when you are choosing your red meats, you want to make sure that it is a leaner cut of meat. So you want to choose your loins. Um, and you also want to make sure that there's not as much marbling in your meat. And marbling is when you can actually see the fat in the meat. So it's not only trimming your fat, but also choosing a cut of meat that has less fat in the meat itself. Red meat should be limited um, to once to twice a week, and that is for heart health guidelines. The next section is going to be the bread department. And so this is a very tricky area for people because you're supposed to have at least half of your grains, whole grains for the day. So the first thing you want to do is look at the ingredient list. So you want to make sure that the first four ingredients have the word whole in it, not just wheat, whole. This is going to indicate a whole grain product. You also want to make sure that sugars or honey or molasses isn't in the first four ingredients as well because um, this can increase the amount of sugar that we are eating in our diet. We want to also make sure that there are at least three grams of fiber per slice to help out with our dietary fiber intake. And we want to make sure that you're not picking based on the color of our bread. So a lot of times we look at the bread and it looks brown so we just grab it. But they actually dye bread brown with molasses and honey to give it that dark color that you typically see with whole grains. So you always hear that you should shop the perimeter of the store, which is good, this is where you want to be, but there are great things you can find in the center aisle. So when produce is not in season or you're looking to save some money, canned goods and frozen can be just as good as your fresh. So a couple things you want to look at when you're looking for your canned goods is to make sure that there's no salt added and no sugar added. Not a lower sodium or reduced sodium or sugar. You want to make sure it's no salt added. And when you look at the ingredient list, it should be only the vegetable that's in that can and water. So a fourth of your plate should be your grains. So this is going to include your, not, your starchy vegetables, um, such as corn, potatoes, peas, and beans, and your rice and your pasta. So you want to have a variety of these foods. So you always want to choose more brown rice than white rice, and you always want to choose more whole wheat pasta than white pasta. And you want to have a variety of rices, such as um, wild rice, couscous, quinoa, things like this. Juice is a very common aisle, especially for those with young kids. Um, and this is a very important aisle to understand what you're purchasing. So when you look at a label, you want to make sure that above the nutrition label, it says 100% juice. You have a lot of products on the market that contain only 7% juice or 15% juice or sometimes even less. And so it's very deceptive to see fruit on there and it's really a fruit flavored drink more as a fruit juice. Next stop is our dairy aisle. And this is an often under-consumed food group. It is one of our five food groups and so it is important in our diet. We always want to make sure we choose our low fat and skim dairy, whether it is cheese or milk or yogurt. Um, you can use alternative sources of dairy if you are lactose intolerant, such as almond and soy. You just want to make sure there's no added sugars and you also want to make sure they do have calcium and vitamin D added, such as in milk. One of the most often shopped aisles is going to be the bakery section. And this is where a lot of our sweets and desserts are gonna be found. They have no health benefits in our diet, but they are delicious. So we do wanna make sure we're eating them in moderation. Just keep in mind that it is one of our top sources for added sugar and for bad heart harming fats. So the frozen aisle can be your best friend, especially in the times of the year where produce is not as plentiful. Um, this is a section where you can save money, you can keep several different varieties of vegetables in your freezer and pull them out when you forget to have one with your meal. You just want to make sure, just like your canned goods, there's no added salt or added sugar. So you want to choose the ones that are just vegetables and none with sauces and cheeses and things like that.